Do you run Teams inside your VDR environment? Do you get slow performance? Are you missing certain features? If so, today I've got the solution for you. In today's video, we're going to explore the new Teams Slink Core functionality that Microsoft recently released. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Neil McLaughlin, aka The Virtual Man. On this channel, you can find the latest news about Microsoft Virtual Desktop, Windows 365, Intune, Nerdio, Windows, and much, much more. I've been working in the VDR industry for approximately 15 years now. I'm a five-year Microsoft MVP. Um, I've written a book and also create YouTube channel. So hopefully I can bring you lots of engaging content that you'll enjoy and learn from. So let's take a look at these new Teams Slink Core features and see what they are and see what difference it would make in my Teams VDI environment. Okay. So first of all, what is Teams Slink Core? So Teams Slink Core is a new media engine or an existing media engine that was already present for the physical version of Teams. Um, and it's now been piped into the VDI version of Teams. Okay, so historically we relied upon something called WebRTC uh, from Microsoft Teams, um, and we now have full SlimCore support um, within Teams. Now, what that means is because we've got the existing version of the engine um, that was used as a physical client, it means that we're going to get much better feature parity, right? So uh, previously, um, any features that we put into the Teams edition, they had to be supported by the by the WebRTC. Okay, so I'm um, kind of merging the two together uh, makes the, the features um, a lot more usable. There won't be every single feature available within the, uh, the, the VDI version of Teams, but we're going to be a lot closer to what we were previously. So next we have performance improvements. So because, again, we're using the SlimCore engine, which I'll go into a bit more detail shortly, um, we get better performance. So we can join calls quicker. And when we're in the calls, um, the performance should be um, much much better as well but we're going to go into the architecture shortly um, and we'll explain what those differences are and why you get a better performance okay. secondly we've got a better auto update mechanism right so again previously um, we had to rely on the web rtc so every time we had to update the version of teams and we also had to update the, the web rtc component as well um, but now the slim core edition and the kind of the media engines built into the actual um, client itself um, so when you update version of Teams, you also update the Slim Core engine, um, and that basically means it's a lot easier um, to update the version of Teams in your infrastructure as well. So um, it just makes for a much better smooth updating experience um, than it was previously. So lastly, we've got better resource management. Um, so when we're using Slim Core, we should be using less resources than when previously when we had to rely on the WebRTC media engine um, for Teams meetings and such. So there you go, that's just a quick summary of all the features that you're going to get. So in summary, you're going to get better performance, it's going to be easier to update and manage, um, and you'll have less resource usage on your multi-session hosts. Okay, so this is definitely a, a really, really good thing. So that's more of a talk. Let's actually going to go look at the architecture of the new client, um, and then we'll just go and quickly show you um, how to use it, um, and also how to check how you're using it as well. Okay, so now let's go and look at the architecture of the new um, Slim Core um, and then see what changes have been made and how they uh, kind of affect the functionality of the product. So this is the, the network architecture screen that you can see um, from the Microsoft documentation, right? Um, so in the light blue components are the new components. Um, dark blue is the existing Teams components, right? Um, so obviously we still installed the, the Teams client onto the session hosts. Um, there has to be a minimum versions, which we'll go through shortly. Um, but essentially, the new behavior is um, we have this thing called the VDI bridge. Okay. And the VDI bridge is essentially the link between the uh, Teams client, which is sitting on the like the AVD session host, um, and your client. Okay. Um, so let's quickly walk through um, what the behavior is. So when we start the new Teams, right, the Teams client authenticate to the team services right tenant policies are pushed down to the teams client and then relevant configuration is deployed to the application so no changes there um team just text that's running in the virtual desktop environment initiates the internal vdi bridge service okay um so this is the new behavior what it's doing teams opens a secure virtual channel onto the server and then the remote desktop protocol carries a request through to the client okay um that previously loaded the MS Teams plugin, right? Then the remote desktop client spawns a process, a new process called MS Teams VDI.exe, right? Which is the new media engine used for the new optimization. So this will be previously be the WebRTC, 
okay now we're using the new slim core and um, component and again and a bit later on in the uh in the video we'll take a quick look at that and then the slim core media engine on the client and the ms teams the xc on the virtual desktop now have bi-directional channel and can start processing multimedia requests okay so this is essentially how the new clients are kind of interacting with each other so um you can see here on my user device i'd have an ms teams plugin.dll and that's what it's using to communicate with the vdi bridge um, which is running on the uh, session host and you can see there as well we've got some um, network communication which happens right so um, you need to make sure that the relevant ports are open as well so um, your side of clients needs to be able to communicate with the AVD session host um, UDP port 37 sorry 3478 um, 3480 3481 and TCP 443 um, which is what was used previously okay so if you do have a kind of lockdown environment uh, or if it's not working for you the first thing to check um, will be these uh, network ports here okay so let's have a look at the features um, which are now enabled with the new uh, slim core optimization okay so we can now have 1080p um, we've got hardware acceleration on the endpoint um, so that may be really useful um, to reduce the number of resources um, on the actual VDI session host itself um, we have gallery views we have QoS um, which can really help with the performance as well. Noise suppression, HID, presenter mode, um, Teams premium versions, um, user uploaded background effects, and then kind of zoom in and out as well. So, and these are the new kind of capabilities that um, are enabled by using the new Slim Core version. All right, so what's the, the minimum requirements that we have to have to use the new Slim Core version of Teams? Okay, so let's take a quick look at that now. Um, so, first of all, um, we need to make sure we're using the most latest up-to-date Teams version that we can do. Um, so the minimum version that we need to have um, for the AVD session is uh, version 24193, okay? Um, so this is the, the actual minimum version you need for, for Microsoft Teams. Um, and then we also need to be running either um, the Windows app version 1.3.252 um, or we need to be running the remote desktop client version 1.2.5.4.0.5, okay? Um, and then you need to be running at least Windows 10 1809, which um, hopefully most of you are doing. Um, but yeah, to, to get this up and running, um, they're the absolute minimum um, versions that you need. Okay. And then to, to, to get this actually working, what do we actually do? Well, here's the thing. You don't actually need to do much at all, right? Um, because all this stuff should work out the box natively. Right, um, so you what they have to do is pretty much nothing. As long as you you meet those minimum requirements, um, you should it should automatically upgrade itself to use um, Slimcore, right? So um, the plugin is actually enabled by default. Okay, so it's bundled with the latest um, remote desktop client or the Windows App Store. So that's why you need um, to be those um, kind of minimum versions, right? So um, if you don't have those minimum versions, then just to get this to work, then just please um, make sure that you do update um, to those versions. Okay. If you're not sure um, whether you're on that version or not, or if you don't have the ability to check, um, then an easy way to check is to actually have a look and see uh, whether this DLL file exists. Okay. So um, here I am inside my uh, app data local directory, and we can see uh, the new file here. So it's MS Teams plugin avd.dll. Okay. So if we just Click on the uh, the properties of that. So where are we? Click on properties, um, and we can see on the details tab um, that was actually created on the uh, 17th of September. So um, quite recent. Then you can check the file version on there as well. So um, that's a, an easy way to check to see whether you've got that on there. And this is the DLL file which is actually responsible um, for all the kind of sl slim core functionality. And you can see the file size different to that file as well. So um, it. Traditionally, we used the WebRTC uh, to communicate. Now we use this uh, DLL file, which is only 231 kilobytes. And um, so um, this is the, the kind of file which is updated uh, when you run the Teams update as well. So how do we check to see whether the Teams Slim Core is actually working or not? Luckily, very, very simple. All right, so I'm just going to look over to my other screen. So here we are in my, in my Teams client, right? So this is the VDI version of Teams that I've deployed. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings. So find that here, go to settings and then click on the about teams, right? Um, so this is inside my uh, virtual desktop session. And then you'll see here, it says 
AVD Slim Core Medium Optimized. Okay. So if we were using the older version, it would say AVD Optimized. Now it's basically saying AVD Slim Core Media Optimized. Okay. So that means we're using the new media engine um, and therefore we'll have the, the latest optimizations that are in place. So that's how you check it on the actual um, VDI uh, endpoint itself. The next we'll just go and check to see how it's actually using and um, connecting from the actual um, thin client or device where you're accessing it from. Okay, so I'm now on the device where I'm accessing the desktop from, um, and you can see here I've just run get apex package microsoft.teams.slimcore, um, and it's brought back all these different ones here, right? So here you can see the, the MSX package, so it's Microsoft Teams Slimcore VDI. Right, so this is the, the thing which is automatically deployed um, as part of the um, remote desktop client, right? And you'll see here and the different versions as well. So it does keep a couple of different versions for compatibility reasons. So if you just want to triple check and see if, for example, you're troubleshooting an issue and it's not working properly, um, then you just need to go to the client um, and then just type in this get hyphen apex package, uh, microsoft.teams.slimcore star. Um, and that'll bring back um, all the packages which are actually um, installed on the client. Okay. All right, so that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you do, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Um, so yeah, I mean, look, just in quick summary, um, the new Teams Slim Claw Media Engine hopefully is going to massively improve the Teams experience um, for VDI users. We're, we're getting better um, deployment we're getting more feature parity between um, sort of the your fit client and your VDI versions but most importantly hopefully we'll get better performance um, because we're using the, the updated media engine we don't have to depend on the um, the WebRTC protocol um, anymore so it will just make the whole team's experience a lot better on, on video environments okay so that's it from me this week I'm looking forward to more content next week so uh, I'll see you next week thanks goodbye Thank <music> you.